Okay, so let's start talking about the uh, change in energy for reactions. How about, I don't know, C6H12O6. So that is glucose. That's glucose, yeah, good. So that's glucose. And it combines with oxygen sometimes and produces a CO2 and water, right? And you're probably gonna yell at me if I don't balance it. All right, let's balance it. So we need a sixer there, six here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Six here. All right, so that's uh, basically throwing some ATP involved in there somehow. That's cellular respiration. That's what you're doing right now, okay? Um, so you got some glucose from your breakfast and or lunch somehow, some way. Why do we do this reaction? Get to get energy, okay? All right, so we get energy from this reaction, all right? So let's call that reaction our system, all right? That's our system, the reaction. That's our system, all right? And where are the surroundings? That's us. Again, like, wow. You can draw too. All right, so which energy, which way is the energy flowing uh, for this reaction? Is, reaction go, is the energy going from the system to the surroundings or the surroundings to the system? System to the surroundings. That's why we're doing it. We're getting energy from it. So that means, what is the reaction doing? Is the reaction gaining energy or losing energy? It's losing. So the change in energy of the reaction is negative, so less than zero. How we say that? Or show that? Write that? Whatever you want to say. So now the question becomes, well first, let's, uh, let's define things. So if our change in energy of our reaction, change in energy of anything, is always final minus initial, what's my final state? Well the final state is my products. This is the final, and the reactants are my initial state. So the change in energy of the reaction is really the change in the energy of my products minus the energy of my reactants. So a question we could ask is, which has higher energy? The products or reactants. The reactants? Reactants? Why do you say the reactants? Okay, and I think you're on the right track, but just think about, um, think about it just from a mathematical standpoint. If, this, if the change, if this value is negative, which one has to be bigger, the products or the reactants? Reactants, we have to subtract by a bigger number. Five minus 10, two minus three, one minus two, 10 minus 100, 500 minus 1,000, 1,000 minus 2 million, 2 million minus a billion. Do you want me to keep going? No. I can keep going. Um, so yeah, so the uh, reactants in this instance, if, and it is because we know this is how we get energy, the reactants have to be higher potential energy than the products. So the energy of the reactants has to be higher than the energy of the products to transfer energy. And so what happens is, and of course this is not, not what happens, this is why we get energy or how we get energy out of this reaction. Okay, we talked about um, potential energy due to position. We use the ball rolling down the hill, starts at higher potential energy. Well, you can think that, and I use this uh, analogy for the same thing, all right? This reaction is just the ball rolling down the hill, okay? The products at the top of the hill, I got all these colors and I keep on using the same ones. 
Nope, I already used blue. Did I use red? Yep. Green? Yep. Purple. My hill is purple. I wanted to use green for the hill because that makes more sense, but I already used a lot of green. Okay, so now we have a purple hill. Okay. It's like a Dr. Seuss landscape. All right, so my reactants, glucose and oxygen, are higher potential energy than my products, CO2 and water. And so when you go from high potential energy to low potential energy, all right, To low potential energy, where'd that energy go? Well, let's just make up some numbers first, okay? So let's say this starts out at 50 joules, all right? And now we're at 25 joules, okay? We went from 50 to 25. Again, we lost 25 joules. So it would be final minus initial, 25 minus 50, negative 25 joules. Where'd that energy go? Surrounding. To the surroundings, to us. We got the 50 joules by doing that chemical reaction. Or yeah, 25 joules. Doo, doo, doo. And in general, um, so in Gen Chem 1, what did we say about high potential energy molecules or systems? Were they stable or unstable? Unstable, unstable. And then lower potential energy is more stable. Well, we know that. I mean, oxygen is very reactive. Glucose turns out to be very reactive. CO2 and water are really stable molecules. They don't react very much. Okay, And so that's, that's why we're able to get energy out of this. Or no, rather, um, that's why this reaction tends to happen is it goes from high potential energy to low potential energy. Just like the ball rolling down the hill, that's why this reaction happens as well. It goes from high potential energy to low potential energy. And in general, you know, that's what nature does. Okay, nature goes from high potential energy to low potential energy. Question? No, I heard a question. Um, well, we'll talk about one other uh, thing nature tends to do, and that's entropy uh, in the future, but this answers a lot of questions. Okay, if you ask me, you know, why something happens, you know, in terms of chemistry or physics, if I don't know, my first, you know, initial guess will be, well, it must be going from a high potential energy state to a low potential energy state. That's just what, you know, nature tends to do. And that's, you know, uh, very useful in this case. Okay, so a ball rolls down the hill uh, spontaneously. Okay, this reaction would happen spontaneously. We get energy out of it. All right, can you push the ball? back up the hill? Yes. But it takes energy. Yes, but it takes energy. All right. So could we do the reverse of this reaction? Okay. Could we take CO2? Need to cordon off some more room. I know. <laughs> if there's one thing I know, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so can we, can this reaction happen? Can we take 6 CO2 plus 6 waters and make glucose? and oxygen. Can this reaction happen? Yes. yes. What? It does take energy, takes energy. What? It's photosynthesis. Yeah, this is the main chemical. The reverse of, you know, our cellular respiration is photosynthesis. Plants take CO2 and water, make yummy sugars like glucose, and they make out some oxygen, which also happens to be pretty useful. All right, I'm a fan of plants, okay? Uh, but of course, this is basically pushing the ball back up the hill, all right? So we're going from CO2 and water, which are lower potential energy, we're pushing them up hill, all right? 
So what do you think the uh, change in energy of this reaction is? Positive. So the reverse of any reactions, you're just going to flip the sign. We'll see that later. This is our first hint at it. Whenever you flip, because it's final minus initial. Instead of 50 minus 25, now it's 25 minus 50. So you just flip the sign. All right. So now my reaction, if it's going uphill, is it gaining energy or losing energy? Going up, yeah, it was gaining energy. Where does it get that energy? From the sun, the surroundings, yep. So the surroundings would be our sun primarily. Wow, artiste. Actually, that yellow is not coming up very good. That's the sun. It's a little too bright. Put your shades on. All right, so those are the two types of reactions. We'll, get, we'll put names on them. Spoiler alert, exothermic and endothermic reactions, ones that go downhill, tr transfer energy out. You probably already knew that. Endothermic ones are going uphill in terms of energy. They're absorbing energy. Where do they get the energy? They have to get it from somewhere. The surroundings is what we generically term that, and they can get it from other places.